this we should be good um hopefully everybody's doing well we have a guest today um i love these ones i i, not, I like doing the solo ones too i love answering your questions solo wise but i love when we have friends come on the show and they share their thoughts and expertise with them so um yeah so we have jort on van Wilben wilberg Jin. i pronounce it right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best pronunciation i think you probably ever heard of your name that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Wilbergen. Wilbergen. Is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a Dutch rolling G. You know, it's uh, <laughs> man. It's a, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> I but just, Wilbergen is fine. So. <laughs> yeah, Dutch is a really crazy language. I just got back from the Amster, um, Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and it was yeah, I was hearing a lot of Dutch speaking. It was awesome, really really enjoy it. I wish I could speak it. It seems very complex. So, Yeah, it's, it's a funny language. It's, it's a combination of so many different things and it's been around for a while as well, you know, because uh, it was actually spoken like all over the world during the, the you know, the, the age of discovery and trade in the Caribbean and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a fun heritage to be part of. I found out the Dutch were one of the first um, allowed into Japan for trading too, which I thought was pretty interesting. They, they were like, yeah, one yeah. of the first ones. So, yeah. And to, to think of the Netherlands and how small it is in comparison to other countries, but how vast the enterprise was, is pretty interesting too. So, yeah. Yeah, man, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, where did you were you born in the Netherlands? Yeah, yeah, I was the born in the Netherlands, was. and um, I'm living in in Rome in Italy right now. Um, I, I moved here uh, four months ago because uh, my girlfriend was living here and. We had a long distance relationship when I was working in Manchester on, on, on Star Citizen. Hmm. And um, basically, after yeah, like a year and, 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 a, and a couple months, uh, uh, I just decided that uh, it was enough and I, I really needed to move over to her. Uh, and uh, so I did. So I, I, met her, her I met her when we were in London, I think so. She was with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, super nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, awesome. Okay, great. Very cool. You guys are um, super close. And how long you guys been together for? Uh, like almost, almost two years now. It's not that long, but it's just, it's just, you know, when you meet someone really special, you just know it's, it's, it's the one or something. I don't yeah, know. Man. It sounds really romantic, no, but that's true. it's just, yeah, it's just so good. It's so close, and um, yeah. It was a really good decision. It's it's kind of scary because I, I switched to full time freelancing and you know how that goes. So yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still in my first couple months of that, but uh, I've got some clients now coming in, so I, I think I'm, I'm going to be fine. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a good adventure for sure. Awesome, very cool. Uh, that's um, it's always good to have that too. You know, I think that's uh, one of the things that is often overlooked is uh, you know having that counterbalance, whether it's family or. A significant other I think it helps too and it improves your game oftentimes you know so um, yeah awesome so um, I guess we want to just kind of maybe introduce who you are and what you've done and maybe kind of give an idea to people what it is that you do and what you're interested in and kind of why and how you got into this industry maybe that would help and then um, today just so you guys know we're gonna do some cool live demos uh, George is going to go and show us all kinds of awesome stuff that he's been doing inside of Fusion 360, which is a program that you guys know we love. Um, Mache uses it, I use it. We're building a class for it on Learn Squared, so there's all kinds of cool stuff for it. So, um, but yeah, if you want to do like a brief introduction or whatever, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so um, uh, I'm Jordan from the Netherlands. Uh, um, Basically, like a lot of people, when I finished uh, high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, so initially, I actually studied to become an English teacher, mm -hmm. but uh, they had us do an internship in the, in the, in the first year of the course, and um, uh, they put me in front of 30, 14-year-olds that were all screaming and running through the classroom. <laughs> so <laughs> I quickly dished on that one. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, like... A, I still didn't really know what to do, and, and, and I figured that, you know, if I'm going to do anything, I, I should just do what I really like and always like drawing. So um, I then uh, switched to uh, art school. Uh, it was a game art education, which, which proved really awesome because basically we were just making games all year long for four years. Hmm. And um, I got to try, like, programming, game design, team management. You know, it, they really supported you just trying out a bunch of different things. So... Um, 
during that course, I, I actually got in art school just doing acrylics and oils, which I was doing back when I was a teenager. Interesting. Uh, Did you like painting in oils and acrylics and stuff? Yeah, yeah, it was really cool for me. It was really like, um, I used to say, like, just a way to, to, to get rid of some excess emotions or something like that. Like I always, <laughs> I, I actually started out doing art uh, uh, with Warhammer and, and painting all those miniatures and stuff. And I was, um, uh, I was a, I was a pretty competitive player as well, like doing tournaments. Um, and then at some point, I, I figured that if I could paint a miniature, I could paint a canvas as well. <laughs> yeah. Which of course is a bit of a weird notion, maybe. But it, yeah, it was lots of fun, and uh, actually managed to get one of my paintings uh, in a museum uh, at some point in a, in a contest. And, and yeah, like back then, I, I, I knew that that art was a thing, but I didn't really know it was a job, right? So yeah. a lot of people, I don't, I don't know, like. I, I didn't know it was a job. I didn't know people could actually make a living with that. Yeah, uh, a lot of people don't know that, which is interesting, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's so weird. Like even you, like I I remember that the like at the store where I bought my warmer models, there was this guy and and one of his friends. He won one of the Blizzard art contests, hmm. and um, he actually got hired by Blizzard because of it. You know, <laughs> and it was like, what? You know, that sounds almost like like somebody comes down from heaven and picks you up. You know, <laughs> that's that's sort of the notion it had back then. That's but awesome. um, yeah, but like during art school, my school was really well related to uh, a studio in Amsterdam called Guerrilla Games. Oh, okay, they yeah. did. Um, they do. Um, edit. Well, sorry, go on. I know I know that studio. They do great stuff. Yeah, they did Killzone and uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they had two of those, uh, two, of, two, two of their uh, concept artists come over to the school uh, during the first year, and they really introduced me to AAA concept art. Mm. Like I, I, I hadn't even heard of Feng Zhu at that point, right? Okay. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so at that point, I really knew that that's what I wanted to pursue, and and in a year and a half after they introduced me to that, and then. Uh, it's also when I bought my first Wacom and I started really doing Photoshop and stuff. A uh, year and a half later, I got an internship at Guerrilla Games, and and um, they basically taught me everything, like photo bashing and you know, <laughs> just composition and that sort of stuff. So I was I was super super lucky to get into that and to work on Horizon as well. Awesome. Uh, was yeah, I was there for a year and. Um, yeah, it was just really, really cool. Um, really good experience. And then, um, yeah, after that, I, I graduated, did a graduation project, which is also my art station. And um, um, what school did you yeah, go to for your education? It's called the HKU. It's in Hilversum, which is right next to Amsterdam. Oh, okay, cool. Man, I like it out yeah. there, dude. Amsterdam is a. It's it's a little crazy for me, especially down where the L, like the tourist stuff is, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love visiting there. It's such a, such a vibrant, crazy, beautiful city. Especially coming from like you know, L.A. and San Diego, which is beautiful in its own right, but it's, it's very new and there's no like, deep rooted history like, Amsterdam yeah. has. You know, it's just like a patina everywhere. It's just so cool, and all the buildings are all like wonky and weird looking and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Have you, have you ever been to Rome though? I haven't been to Italy yet. That's uh, that's on my list. Uh, yeah, like in Ro in Rome, it's so funny. Like they uh, they're not allowed to take any ruins down, so they actually have like roads and train stations built inside of the ruins just to like use the space, but they cannot tear them down. So they really build around the whole ruins. It's such a crazy crazy thing to see like suddenly there's just a like on the subway station there's suddenly just a pillar of ancient rome just sticking through just <laughs> wow doesn't make any sense <laughs> that sounds insane yeah. i wonder if that's yeah. like um safe <laughs> yeah i don't know man but it's it's so good though it's so good do you, and also do when you, you like walk... living there more than the netherlands or do you miss the netherlands i don't know i like there's something to say for 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 every country i think i mean i like of course, I like my own country. I, I grew up there; it's really familiar to me. Yeah. But but Rome has its own beauty, and and like the Netherlands is all flat. And if I look out the window right now, I can just see snow-topped mountains. You that's know, cool. so yeah, it, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, plus, yeah, the whole history here. Like like what I was gonna say, um, they actually have uh, uh, obelisks here from from ancient Egypt oh. that are like when they took them to Rome, they were as old. As Rome now is to us, wow, which is so crazy to think of, right? Yeah, <laughs> wow, 
<laughs> That's, so, so, yeah, yeah, so we don't have that grasp here in, in the States, especially down on the West Coast of our country is so new. We don't have any mm-hmm. of that kind of stuff, you know, like it's, it's really interesting. That's why I really love being able to travel and go and, and, and do these things out in Europe because it's just, and I think even in China and stuff, you just have even older stuff, you know, and the culture is so rich and deep, you know, just really interesting. The reason why I bring this up is I think it's really important because um, the way you grow up, where you're raised, your culture, what you're influenced by, the art that you're influenced by. I think that it has a, a real direct result into the outcome of art that you create naturally, you know. And when I was in, uh, I went to the um, the museum, the the, nat- the natural art museum. I can't remember what it was called. When I was in Amsterdam, yeah. and I the saw like museum. the Rembrandts and the, um, uh, yeah. um, what is it? Uh, just a bunch of classics, and it was awesome, you know. And we have some of that here too, but a lot of our art culture and stuff comes from, um, you know entertainment and Hollywood and stuff. So, which is, again, is very recent. Um, if you guys have questions too in the chat, if you guys have questions, I see some stuff going on. So please be sure to let Joe know. Um, he will um, send the questions to me and then we'll get them going and stuff. But um, yeah, so sorry, you continue. You were talking about kind of where you were going and your art education <laughs> and stuff. We're, we'll jump around a little bit too as we go through this conversation. Yeah. So. I, I think I think what you mentioned about um, where where you grow up and all the culture is it's really important. It's definitely something I try to implement as, as much as possible, just to try to pick as much from from what I see and try to, to put it in, you know, my my work. Like at Star Citizen, I was working on these environment concept paintings, and it was really uh, like the story was that there were hundreds of years of development, like people building on top of stuff, and and I could really take from what I see here in Rome and apply it in a, in a science fiction way to my work. So mm. I definitely agree that it's, it's, it's super important, super inspiring. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we're, just, to compl- just to finish the story real quick, uh, basically did, a, yeah, did my graduation project and uh, people really liked that. So I, straight out of school, I was hired to work on Star Citizen. Um, and that's and a was video there for, game, right? That was like, was it a like a Kickstarter video game or something? I can't remember. I remember hearing something about it. Was yeah, it no, Star Citizen is the, is the biggest Kickstarter project in the world. It, right, it raised yeah. over over 150 million dollars. Wow. Uh, they have five studios and 400 people <laughs> working for them. It's crazy. Whoa. I think um, I remember seeing something where the guy was playing the game and it broke or something. Is that something, <laughs> is that that game? I can't remember. Yeah, could, okay. could be. I, You're all I mean, shut up, still... Ash. Bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's still development. So, yeah, they have a lot of bugs. That's that awesome. was good fun, though. It was good fun. It was a good experience. Um, but, yeah, as I said, like, um, uh, I, I just left to uh, to be with my girlfriend and to uh, yeah to be a freelancer. So, um, yeah, that's that's where I'm at right now, actually. Yeah, like, in, in, in between... Um, uh, I also started doing some conference talks. I was invited to industry workshops last year where we met. Yeah, yeah, um, that was awesome too. You were showing all your sweet, sweet goodness. I was like, this is great. I'm glad we're doing <laughs> this now. It's been a while since then, but yeah, it was nice meeting you there. If anybody in the yeah. chat room went to that, um, let us know because that was an awesome event. The next one next year is going to be pretty crazy too. Got a bunch of really cool guys on, on the on the lineup for that one too. It's a great event. Really cool. Yeah, man, they got John Harris this year. That's, that's yeah, just crazy. That's right. Yeah, John Harris. That's <laughs> I have a bunch of his books on my shelf over here. It's, that's <laughs> me too, right? It's like <laughs> yeah, uh, he's one of the, uh, like, the gods of like concept painting because he was doing them in in like acrylic and oils like way back in the yeah. day. Yeah, his work is incredible. If, if you're watching this, you don't know who he is. You should definitely uh, check out his work. He's got a bunch of really great books too, and very inspiring. Yeah, great stuff. Um, yeah, awesome. I'll so, probably, I'll probably go to industry workshop with the school I'm I'm teaching at right now. So that might be a, a funny thing. Like if I could do a, a short plug. Yeah, um, please. <laughs> so actually, I'm 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 teaching at a, a school here in Rome, and um, they're called ID Academy. Okay. And they they only started like last year, but they're um, a live school, so not not online. Okay. But they, they're founded by one of the uh, art directors of Pixar called uh, Anthony Christoph. And he's art director on, um, he was art director on Wally, Finding Nemo, and also on Incredibles 2. Oh, wow. Um, do, you, do you work with him directly? Or well, I, I, met it, I met him in uh, at Annecy F- Animation Festival. Uh, but I, um, like right now, he teaches through Skype. But I do work with him directly because I'm, I'm starting my own course there. 
okay. Uh, next for next year, starting in October. What's it called? Uh, it's called uh, 3D concept design. Okay. So awesome. so basically concept design using 3D tools, and uh, I'm working with him for the um, um, yeah, for the curriculum basically, and uh, I'll be teaching like uh, everything basically that I was doing at Star Citizen, so vehicle design, prop design, environment design, that sort of thing. Awesome. Uh, using like SketchUp and Fusion and, and kind of kit bashing and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So awesome. that, that's the plan, and, and just using all the tools basically, but but doing a heavy focus on not only design but also the whole the whole meta stuff, you know, the the mentality, uh, mindfulness, uh, philosophy, that sort of thing. Because I think that that's really like the most important thing you can actually teach. Mm. Um, because technique just takes a really long while, and this course is only going to be like a year. But if I can teach them something about mentality, mm. I think that would be really helpful as well. So yeah. yeah that, that, I'm really excited about that one. <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, congrats. I mean, it's interesting to go, like you were mentioning earlier, that when you first started in this, you were going to go and teach, like, these 13-year-olds. You're like, ah, you know, like, the same way. I'd, it's too much to deal with. But then you went off and kind of found your way through the concept art and entertainment industry, and now you're teaching again. So that's kind of cool. It's always good to give yeah. back, I think. And you learn a lot by teaching. You become better, I think, at your craft because you have to explain it in multiple dimensions and help people understand how it works which i think is really it's quite difficult to do you know so um yeah man absolutely and i, I love teaching like i'm gonna teach a course for a concept art workshop this summer as well which is an online course awesome uh and and i'm, I'm doing a bunch of mentorships so just you know a bunch of friends that that really show potential and I, i'm just like one of them just got an internship with guerrilla games as well and it's it's so awesome you know when they achieve that when you when you like manage to push them for a year and then they uh, yeah, it's, it's just so it's so awesome to see and so awesome to, to be able to do something for, for someone as well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Giving back is really good, you know, and exchanging that. And, and sometimes your students will um, just like, you know, overcome or like they'll show you something really great. And that's one of my favorite things. It's like when my um, students teach me things, that's like some of my favorite parts about it. Um, teaching you know it's like that exchange that full circle of, of, of t um, communicating things back and forth is a lot of fun so um, these are really cool this looks like this is something I don't know if you can see my screen right now but I'm going through your art station right now and these are yeah. from what I remember because I follow you on um, um, Facebook and you're quite adamant about updating your Facebook with the art and the things that you're interested in and I think I remember you posting these are pretty recent things that you've been doing right these like drones that you are making yeah, yeah. So I, I, I just um, uh, Imagine Effects reached out to me at the beginning of this year because um, I was doing a bunch of fusion stuff and, and I was in conversation with them hmm. and uh, about doing an article for them. Uh, and I was like, uh, all right, you know, like what would be something good to design? So I ended up doing a, a drone design for them. And uh, I really enjoyed doing that, you know, really delving really deep in the mechanics of it. And so after that drone design, I did another one uh, as a gum road. And then uh, after I released that Gumroad, I actually got hired to design the drone we're looking at right now okay. uh, for for a real company. So that's actually being taken in production at the moment. Wow! And Congrats, then, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 super awesome. And I, I work with a friend of mine, and it's just um, uh, that's super cool. And then the other drones we looked at before, they were for uh, for a contest um, with uh, Matthias for Hustle was one of the judges, and and a bunch of people from. Um, uh, from NASA, actually, and and yeah, like I, I actually managed to win that contest with those drones. So that, it, it, yeah, that was really weird. Like I, I just did a bunch of drones, and people liked it. <laughs> that's awesome. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's super cool, and I'm really happy that that uh, the drone is is going to be taken into full production as well. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun to work on, and I really can't wait to see it fly. So uh, that would is, be cool. Is it a pretty big leap between your concept? and then the actual manufacturing process? Is this like the sketch that they then kind of go through and rebuild completely, or how's that for the manufacturing process? Because that's always been a, a thought of mine, because I remember watching Mache making things for Ghost in the Shell, and he would make them in Fusion, and then they would go and 3D print them, but I know it, a prop that's kind of a dead thing is completely different than something that actually has to work and function and, and meet certain categories of you know, design spec and weight and des and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, no. Um, uh, with this, like, they do take it as a blueprint and not as a final model. So they do have like uh, engineers working on it, but okay. um, they're not they're, like this is all 95% uh, of the way there. So I really had wow. to take into account 
Uh, I had to take into account materials. I had to t take into account uh, production uh, methods. So this is going to be cast in plastic. Uh, so it needed to be a two-part body so they can actually stick it onto each other with glue. And then also, for instance, the, the arms. So you see that the arms in the final model, they're, they're split in half. Um, and they have like a, a, a matte part, uh, if, if you scroll up a bit. Okay. <laughs> The final, uh, the final model, but like oh, right um, here, this, this there, arm right here. Yeah, there's a there's a split line, and basically, uh, uh, at the everything behind the split line is is all uh, the same on all four. But then uh, the two at the rear and the two at the front, at, at the like at the body end of it, uh, aren't. And and so like um, mm. that was because uh, to to lower production costs, so they wanted all four four arms at least partially to be the same. Yeah, that you makes know, sense. So they those, can make one jig for the all four. For, so they can repeat that instead of having uh, separate ones, which a lot of cost for tools and stuff and tooling. Yeah, exactly. And, and the same for the legs. So the, the landing legs actually have uh, integrated NFC um, chips. So they, uh, the thing can basically land on the platform and then recharge automatically oh, through its cool. legs. These and, these um, that's cool. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, the, those were all sort of uh, uh, things I had to take into account when designing this. Um, that's so and awesome. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was really a lot of fun. I really hope I, I get to do more of those in the future. That's so cool, um, man. Look at you manifesting everything. That's so rad, though. That's <laughs> you're just like you're putting your interest out there and then it comes back. That's something that I think we could all learn from, you know. That's my whole mantra is like you just do the work that you're passionate about and you put it out there and there's never been a better time in the history of art, basically, to, to have the ability to just do that and then manifest a possible position as an artist to do those things, you know, which is great, so... Um, awesome. Do you want to pass over to your screen and then like start, start sharing some, some madness? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Awesome. Okay, so if Let's... you go to Skype and then share screen and then I can, I'll can i move the screen over to it. And if you guys have questions, cool. there's a couple questions. So while you're doing that, maybe I'll hit some of these questions up. Um, let's see, any thoughts on, wait, hold on, is that part of this one? Any thoughts on balancing intuition on an artistic path with taking advice following the path of others that's a good question actually Let me that's a really here. good one <laughs> yeah what do you think of that see you in wow there. um yeah it's always really hard call to make i think like when when you have to follow your own gut instinct and when when to follow the advice of others because sometimes your gut instinct is wrong but quite often it is is right i think yeah i don't know how, how do you feel about that that's a really good question <laughs> I think it, it all based on exactly what it is that you're interested in that at that exact time and everything else mm. becomes like um, noise almost. You know? And I think it's important for you to know personally what you're doing and your own focus as to what you're after, you know, like um, getting advice. It's, it's always good. Like when I read books and stuff, it's important for me to always remember, like I'm only taking little bits and pieces from the advice, not all of it all at once, because if I did that, then it would destroy my brain, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be something good to do. So I think for me, it's, it's, it's important to know what it is that you're after and then using that to get the right advice from the right people. You know, you wouldn't ask for like a, how to change a tire from like a, a surgeon, you would ask a mechanic for that, you know, so you have to be specific as to what you're trying to do and get that specific feedback. So it works for you. Yeah. Damn, yeah. damn this is tech, dude. This is getting crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the one I did for Imagine Effects. So this is the first drone I I, I, I made like ever. Wow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was good fun, and uh, I I really wanted to make it as realistic as possible because the, the, at this point I already knew I was going freelance, so I wanted to make some stuff that you know um, would work well in my portfolio, and and you know I'm still trying to get into uh, film design jobs. Um, uh, through my uh, good friend Chris Rosewarn, and and he's really trying, but yeah, they're they're full <laughs> at the moment. So yeah. uh, I had two offers that um, that both got retracted again because of budget costs, <laughs> and that was a, that was a problem. Um, but yeah, I basically I, I watched uh, Maciej work and 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 how uh, he was speaking about like how how they can three D print everything. So I, I thought that might be cool and. Uh, to, to sort of achieve that look and um, and also make all the internals so you know if they would take it apart or need to repair it or something wow uh, that might be interesting do you um, when you design this sorry for interrupting but do you do you draw out your ideas or do you have it in your head or what's your process and also how long have you been working with fusion 360 
So Fusion, I learned a little over a year ago. Um, cool. Yeah, so I, I actually started learning Fusion because uh, back at Star Citizen, they gave me a list of about a thousand props that needed to be done for the game. <laughs> and, and so I was like, you know, I'm not going to learn terribly much from doing props, you know, photo bashing and stuff. Yeah. So I, I want to learn some new software so I can actually, you know, so it's sort of useful for me. Yeah. Um, and a friend of mine, uh, Daniel Yaustra, another really good concept artist, he was um, uh, he was already trying a bits and bobs of Fusion, so I thought uh, I might give it a go as well. And yeah, like after a couple of days of doing uh, tutorials from oh shit, I forgot his name. <laughs> uh, you know the, the, real? Guy, the guy in South no the guy in South Africa. What's his name? Oh, um, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had him on the stream as well. Um, he Travis released some Davids. really, yeah, yeah, Travis Davis. He, he released some really good tutorials. So I just did two of those, and then I could already start making some really simple props. So um, that's that's how I started, really. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool, like how you can learn this software so quickly too. I, I found Fusion to be incredibly intuitive and very easy to learn and pick up. I learned I learned it from um, Kirill. Kirill's actually making a class right now with Learn Squared, which is really awesome. And this is gonna right. be, it's gonna be kind of like similar to what you're doing with it, but taking things a little bit into like I don't know I don't know it's 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 a really powerful class so far from what I've seen of it. We're, we're gonna be releasing it pretty soon, I think. So, but yeah, uh, people keep cool, asking man. for Look those because you you know there's a lot of gum roads out there. Kirill has ones. I think you have some. Travis Davids has awesome ones out there. Um, but yeah, I mean you take the little bits from there and then you can learn it. And it's just it's awesome. The, yeah, the internet is yeah. just great. I yeah, and I learned so much from watching Mache work on the stream as well. And, uh, yeah. you know, his, his approach is really different because I, I really approach it as a SketchUp approach. I do everything, you know, I, I draw everything out and then I, I sort of pull it out. And I don't really kit bash mm. in, not in Fusion anyways. Yeah. Um, and I don't use a lot of Booleans actually. Oh, that's um, interesting. That's like what, that's pretty much Mache's thing, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that's really different. But, but to come back to your question, I, uh, for client work and also for these drones, uh, I start with a SketchUp blackout. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I've been using SketchUp basically from day one at my art school. So um, I'm really familiar with it, and it's really easy to do some really quick rough sketches. Yeah. But um, you cannot model to the fidelity that Fusion offers. So uh, I, I just use the two programs in, in tandem basically hmm. uh, to get to get the best results. I never really use SketchUp. That's at, um, it's like a Google program, right? like a free program, right? Yeah, actually, I've, I've got SketchUp open, so I can show you some stuff if you are. Yeah, I'd love to see <laughs> it. I guess like George Hall was always telling me about it, and, and I think um, uh, Ty Rubin, uh, oh, man, my brain's such a mush these days. Um, Ty, Ty Rubin Ellington was always telling me about it too. He, they all use... Um, uh, SketchUp, but I think you're right. I think from I've tried it a little bit, and I thought it was just too lo low fidelity for me to even bother with it. And then I felt Fusion 360 was able to just take those things and uh, go beyond it. And I just love the idea of if you really wanted to print or make something from here, I just love the idea of having that ability. You know, so the power of that is just really awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, but but the thing is, like, I I use SketchUp just for blockouts, and then I would photo bash on top. And for for that workflow, um, SketchUp is really great. So here's here's a model I just uh, I just finished an illustration of. I'll show you the illustration later. Wow. But this is a this is like a, a new spaceship by design, and this is like I don't know twenty million polygons or something. Whoa. And SketchUp SketchUp has no problem with that whatsoever. I I've had models like my graduation work was 250 million polygons and SketchUp was okay sure, you know. <laughs> and then and then so my process with this is I'll, I'll just load them into Keyshot and Keyshot mm -hmm. can handle well if you know um, Max Berman was telling me that Keyshot can handle billions of polygons. Yeah, it's pretty. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean that's just that's just what I use. But then um like I I make a, a quick block out like this well wasn't too quick but uh like in, in two yeah, or three how long days did that take you okay two three days okay yeah yeah and then um w with a bunch of research as well and then i take it into photoshop and then this is what it looks like um i'm not sure if you can see it i'm I, i'm literally gonna post this like tomorrow or, or the day after i'm just working on some extra images awesome i know you love space and that's awesome Ooh, cool yeah 
So you're taking this and then you're, um, you, so you'll do like a, a render pass from Keyshot and then you will go and Photoshop all the extra textures and stuff and then compose a, a whole shot from it. Yeah, yeah, so this is my, this is my Keyshot uh, render. Okay. Uh, this, this image. And so I, I don't really change a lot of it actually. I just put on some decals and stuff. It really depends. Um, yeah, sometimes I repaint bits. Like when I do environments, I do all my environments in, in mostly in either SketchUp or in Moto. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I'll just photo bash on top, basically. I mean, that's that's a process you used a lot as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I just use uh, Cinema 4D for my um, modeling process, but um, it's all the same thing, right? I mean, it's all just different. It's, it's funny because we're all as artists, we're all dispersed in these little islands called, you know, Cinema 4D and Maya and they all do the same thing, you know, they're all islands, you know, in their own in their own sense. I love how this handles all this information though. Is it a server based thing? So is it like a Google server kind of thing? No, no, it's all local. It's, it's really simple and straightforward. Uh, there's a bunch of plugins for this. So you can actually, you know, you, um, you actually have a plugin that does sub demodeling. You have, you have a plugin oh. that does, you know, you have, you have Octane for this as well, <laughs> V-Ray and everything. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's cool. Um, yeah, what I really like is doing, you know, uh, this is something that's coming out in, uh, in Nothing But Mac uh, later this year, so in September. Hmm. Um, but doing this kind of robot stuff is, is really, really easy in SketchUp as well because it's um, it, it just has a couple really basic tools. And then by because it only has those tools, it's really easy to work with them and, and to just, you know, manipulate it, especially if you work just in, like, you know, most of this is just boxes, basically. Um, and, and, and did you learn by teaching yourself, or did somebody show you, or is it something that you learned online through various like YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff? No, I, SketchUp I learned mostly just myself, um, and yeah, there wasn't really anyone that did what I did with the program. So I, yeah, again, Daniel Yaustra, the, the colleague of mine who also works at Star Citizen, he does a lot of SketchUp, but he does it really differently again so um yeah it's it's <laughs> i don't know it's 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 just uh it really depends um i tried to pick up a bunch of tutorials as well i mean I, I really like to learn almost everything i can get my hands on really that's great man uh, that's a good way to think about it too it keeps you relevant in the industry do you find it hard to keep up with everything that's out there uh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> of course, man. Jesus, yeah. there's so much stuff out there. Every, every day there's a new update on a new software. So. What's a program that you have always wanted to learn, but you haven't because it's just something that takes too long or has been in the way or just something that, you know, do you feel yeah. like you have a good pipeline and getting things from your head out to the world or do you feel like there's some other things that you definitely want to learn in regards to programs? Well, there's one thing, uh, I mean, everyone, uh, has issues with, which is of course ZBrush. Um, so <laughs> I didn't say I, mean, it, I was going to say it, but I didn't though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 the program, of course. But um, and then there's another really interesting program. I I really uh, I'm doing a lot of research into, which is Grasshopper. Um, and Grasshopper is a plugin for um, for Rhino, which allows you to do generative design. And um, you know all those Saha Hadid buildings—they're all made in Grasshopper, basically. Mm. So, because um, I think really, like, I, I really want to to push um, shape language and stuff more. Because I've been I've been focusing a lot of on functional designs, but now I want to um, explore shapes more. And and I think that if you look at you know realistic futuristic shapes, it's probably going to be generative design. Yeah, and then come it some, it's math. Yeah, and then come. Yeah, but then combining that with like really functional blockouts. So if you if you have that spaceship thing I, I made over here, if you if you just imagine like a Zaha Hadid sort of skin over it, I mean that's sort of what I see the future of, you know, spaceships and space stations and, and but just, just modern architecture in general have be you seen as well. That, have you seen that thing that um Autodesk is doing? I forget what it's called, but it's basically that same thing, but they're they, they have a program that they're developing right now where it's just it's all generative but it's like so you're let's say you want a chair for example so a chair has um, to carry weight and it has a back and a seating spot and then it has three to four legs right you send those parameters into the program and it generates infinite yeah. amounts of chairs based on math 
and algorithms basically and then you could uh, tweak and adjust the scale and style and everything and the connection points and then it could go and generate all these different ones and basically what that's doing is it's almost like it's filling the gap between the idea and the creator and instead of having it to be like this because right now what we're doing is almost like um, we're hand carving everything you know yeah like what you're doing right there you're hand carving it which is great because it's very bespoke and very unique and special but what the the AI basically the, the the using the computer is basically running algorithms and basically creating the most functional mathematic structure, which to me is is I is awesome. So I didn't I didn't hear about Grasshopper. I'm looking at it right now. It looks really cool. There's a there's a couple yeah, other things that are out there that I think are doing something. But Autodesk has this this I remember seeing this like advertisement that they were doing that just looked incredible. It was awesome. They were showing all kinds of really cool like. Um, I don't know, set up parameters for like making different types of structures and stuff. It was really cool. If you know what it is, say it in the chat. Uh, in your mind. <laughs> I've, I've been doing research in that as well. I can't, I can't recall the name at the moment. But um, as far as I understood it, uh, they're actually using a supercomputer for that at the moment because it takes a lot of processing power. Yeah. So as soon as, as soon as they figure out how to run that sort of thing on a GPU, you know, because we like a lot of people will at least in the future switch to like strong GPU rendering I think and and why not do simulations like that on a GPU as well I mean that would really be awesome if, if, if that's possible and, um, yeah because grasshopper is already a little dated because it uses Rhino as a base which is a really a, a little dated program as well yeah but just imagine if you if you have grasshopper for for Moi or for fusion you know that'd be great would be so sick just talk to Curtis yeah. I don't know if you follow these streams but you have um, our first uh, yeah yeah I have on and he's awesome and well, maybe I'll see what's up with that because that'd be really cool. I'll send him an email and see if there's an inquiry about it because it would be really good. I agree. Fusion's so great, and I think having and introducing that, there, I think there might be something that there is a way to do, um, like you can do um, Veroni mesh from structures, but I don't think you can generate things like what you're talking about. You know, What I'm saying yeah. would be really interesting is if, like, let's say instead of modeling this thing, you said, okay, I have this thing, it's called a drone, known to me as a drone. It's this flying uh, mechanism that carries a battery, it can land, and it needs to go airborne, and it, it carries a camera. And you send all these, you put all these specs, basically, in the, the key commands of everything, and then you say, okay, generate what I need it to be, you know? And then it'll run through all the math, kind of like a stress test, you know? And then by the time it's done, it'll give you the most mathematically and manufacturing safe and... and um, reliable piece of uh, constructed, um, like, I don't know, data, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Which would be yeah, so yeah, crazy. Yeah. It put us all out of jobs, though. Damn it, computers. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> just fine, yeah, so, yeah, I Yeah, I'm, I'm so afraid of that. No, but they're actually... Uh, <laughs> are you liter are you legitimately afraid of being uh, losing your job to it? I'm not. I don't I don't really think so, but... I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it will still be a tool. Because uh, you know it, it generates like a thousand ideas, you have to pick the best, the best looking one, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you have to have a brain. Yeah, there's have to be a user at the end for for a while. Though. Yeah. I think it'll remove a yeah. lot of the people that aren't very good. That's that's true. <laughs> yeah, sure. You have to push for. It. I mean, that, that's that's something. My my, you know, Eden uh, Gretz, you. No, uh, maybe I do. This this concept artist, uh, uh, Maché knows him for sure. He had him on uh, on his art cafe. Okay. Um, but he, he's a really good product designer, and, and, and he, is, he has such a good attitude. Like, basically, he would just be like, oh, just bring it on. You know, I, I want to compete with that program just to, like, <laughs> you know, mesh it out. <laughs> program always so, yeah. win. Yeah, but, yeah. So it's fine. But they're actually working on a, on a new Airbus uh, plane design that, that uses that software, um, as far as I'm aware. And, and, oh, and yeah. they're, doing, they're doing some tests with it. So, yeah, it's, it's just crazy where, where everything's going. Yeah. Oh, the Airbus, like the the traditional um, airplanes that we use to travel around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. I I I was thinking that last time when I was traveling, I was like, why can't they just do submarine style? Because I hate having to sit. Why don't they just have us all in submarine style and lay down? Because that'd be so much better. Because when I have to travel like twelve, sixteen, twenty two hours across to go to like I don't know other parts of the country, I really don't want to sit. <laughs> I'd rather lay down and take a nap through the whole thing. You know. It'd be cool if they could generate capsules, basically. That'd be awesome. Well, isn't that Hypertube? <laughs> what is that? Is that a thing? The Elon Musk's uh, new uh, oh. project. Yeah, he's up to so much stuff I can't keep up even. So. Oh, really? Hypertube? No, he's, he's no, uh, hyper, hyper, uh, 
It's called Hypertrip, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's basically just a, a, a four-man pod in which you lie down and it basically travels underground through a tunnel system at Mach 4. You've heard the same so, the yeah. I'm watching right now. <laughs> it's uh, only four wanna... people, though? That doesn't make sense. Well, four or six, but there's, there's it's just capsules, so you have a bunch. But they wanna oh. they wanna lay the first track actually between San Francisco and LA. Hyperloop, that's it. I'm an idiot. Hyperloop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm uh, it now. I'm oh, that's that interesting. Happens. Hyperloop. But they wanna lay the first track between San Francisco and LA, so you're lucky, I guess. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> but I don't you're know if I care to go to San Francisco that much. It would be cool to take one to Amsterdam. <laughs> No, that's cool. cool. That yeah, would that's be interesting. Awesome. Huh. Oh, because it's was, like a vacuum was... tube kind of thing, huh? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's the idea. And then you kind of float was, in like... between it, and then it just suspends you and, and pushes you. Huh. Interesting. Uh -huh. Still seems a little, uh, I don't know. I, I'm talking shit. I, I have no clue what I'm talking about, but it, yeah. It still seems like a oh. lot of shit to do. Like a lot of material. Oh. All that support material all the way through there. That's like the Great Wall of China style. That doesn't seem like it's smart. Hmm. Mm. Uh, hey, personalized maybe. drones. I go... Personalized drones. There we go. <laughs> that can carry <laughs> well, why us. Not, why not suborbital flights, though? You know, that's that would be that's great. so easy. It just takes a lot to just... get up there, though. You know, right? Doesn't it take a lot of resources for us to get up there? But maybe if there was like some sort of like mechanism that would launch us into that um, that area of the atmosphere. Oh. And then we would get on a thing that would take us. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, or just like a, a big slingshot, right? Just like a big catapult. <laughs> I'm sure people would love it if you called it that when they get in it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but just have, to have a thing that's sort of, you know, it's, it's almost like a, a real gun with a pot where you, or sort of an airplane thing. And then, and then they would just shoot you off and it can rotate 360 degrees so they can sort of aim it at the target. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so so I mean, slingshotting humans at targets, that's what we're saying, right? <laughs> they can fly to the ISS in six hours. You, you won't be in Amsterdam in six hours from LA on a, on a regular plane. I mean, yeah, no? I, I, I hate it. Trust me, I hate it. <laughs> every time I have to, I'm like, I have to go travel out there, I'm like, oh no, you know, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've never been to the States though, so I, oh, okay. I, I can't really relate yeah. to that. But. It's like 16 hours, 14 hours. <laughs> It's just stupid. And then that's not including, you know, like if you have a layover or something, so you have the layover, you have to get off the plane, then you have to prove to these people that you are a citizen of this land, you know, it's just really quite annoying. Yeah, and yeah. traveling's getting harder and harder these days. Okay, what are you showing us here? What is this, this sweet baby? So this is actually uh, the head of that robot I just showed you here in SketchUp, right? That's so this head. is, again, yeah, so you see this head yeah. with four cameras? Mm -hmm. And then, and then I, I sort of did a, a model of that in Fusion wow. uh, went a little creative with that. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, uh, I, 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 it was it was for the book for for nothing but MacBook and and I, I just I spent like a couple of weeks on this just detailing everything. It doesn't make any sense, but uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's fun to do. So that, much though, stuff. Right? It's when, fun to just make stuff. Yeah. You know. So much stuff on here. I just want to redo, but it was a fun fun little test project. Um, just to test a bunch of tools. Yeah, that's cool. So you made like one of the eye things, and then you repeated them, and then moved them, and got them all kind of set up. So you would, so when you wouldn't have to make them over and over, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I actually wanted to do the whole thing in in, in Fusion, but that uh, proves a bit time consuming at the time. I made this like half a year ago. Okay. Uh, and so like I have an arm as well here, um, which I can just like it, it was completely rigged, and you can move it around and stuff. Whoa. But, um, yeah. Damn, that's cool. I've never done it <laughs> and used the rig thing. That's really cool. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a bit. But I have it on that other drone as well. I I I talked about it in my in my Gumroad. But you can basically just uh, uh, drag this like. I have one of your Gumroads. I have the one with you're making the cube or something like that. The Rubik's cube. That's like the original one, I think. I got the OG. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I need, to get, <laughs> I need to get the new one. Wow, this is so. This is all on your Gumroad. Yeah, yeah, this drone was made from my Gumroad, so I explained Sick. like how I do this. This oh, that rig is not working, but um, oh, it's not static. Right. Yeah, yeah, I explained all of that. It's, it, but the thing is, it's so weird, right? So if if you talk to this Curtis guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you can rig it all in Fusion, right? And you, and you can do like uh, studies 
on this rig, uh, like stress tests and stuff. Yeah. But then when you go to the animation tab, the whole rig disappears. Oh, that's it's wrong. It's not there anymore. You should make a <laughs> list of all the things that you want to get fixed and then send them to me and I'll be sure to pass them along. So, yeah, because you're a power yeah, user and they need information like that from you. I try to remember to tell them as well. But yeah, it's not a perfect program, but it's damn awesome though. You know, it's like, for what it is yeah. and what it offers us as creatives too. So I think I'll the ease sure of use is a lot of fun, but yeah. I'll be sure to be in the chat room next time you, uh, you guys have them on. Yeah, please do. We'll have to, I'll talk to Maché and we'll have to set up a date for having Curtis back on because we love, we love having him on and razzing him about the shortcuts because I, I want shortcuts already and I want a better way to navigate around. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Do you want to, um, it would be really cool to kind of see maybe your approach of how you, because what you've showed us so far is like the finished product and stuff, and that's awesome. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I think when I look at your work, it's interesting. I would want, I'm curious to know, like, what is your process? Because obviously you mentioned it differs from Mache and probably from mine because I have my own methodologies, but I'm curious to see kind of, do you start, so you said you start with like, you sketch everything out, do you sketch on planes and then you kind of build out your sketches and then you do a lot of cuts and booleans and stuff or how do you how do you go about it and from, from like more of a starting standpoint, basically? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I sketch everything on planes, I just pull it out and then I, 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 I cut into that using sketches again. It's, it's really like, a, like if you know SketchUp, it's, it's pretty much how you do everything in SketchUp, just more detail. Okay. So in SketchUp, you also you also sketch on a plane, you sketch on a cube, and then you just yeah you know, sort of it's not really a boolean. I think it's more like you just drag out the profile. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's, that's just how I set everything up. I, I do start a lot with cubes and um, cylinders. Mm -hmm. um, so let, let me see if I can just open the basic block out of this thing. Oh yeah, that's just the the import that I get from SketchUp. Um, I mean, I could just make one right now, but like basically, I, I, I just this is the SketchUp mo model. Okay. Um, that I just imported as an OBJ, mm -hmm. and then I'll, I I would just model these these cylinders, and then uh, I just start from there, uh, from a from a SketchUp block idea. Yeah. But just I, I can just model. Base. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I can model a quick drone right now for you. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious to see kind of your process. And also people are mentioning it's a little laggy. We're using Skype and stuff. Sometimes Skype is a little laggy no matter what we do, so I apologize for that. Um, but it's mostly when you move around really quickly, but it should be okay, though. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it should be fine. Cool. So now we're using uh, Fusion 360. You drew a sketch. You're extracting it, extruding it, I guess. You're using the yeah, extrusion or the push and pull? Uh, extrusion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So I'll just make a really quick block out and then um, and then I'll just um, yeah I'll go from there. Do you have like when you get so, into it when you make sketches and stuff? Does sometimes this, the sketches get so big and crazy? How do you manage that? Because that's one of my problems I have. It just gets so messy and cluttery. Like you know the sketch tab up on the upper left. All right. Yeah, that's so annoying. Like you cannot group your sketches. Me um, too. See, that's another thing. If you make a list, I'll send it to Curtis and we'll just demand them. <laughs> we demand good stuff. <laughs> yeah, so so one thing I do is that at some point when it becomes too cluttered, I break everything up into components, and when you um, yeah, and then I re re reference in my components, and if you do that, the whole sketch step resets. Okay. Um, so um, that's a way to do it. I mean, there's there, you know what the funny thing about Fusion is 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 there's a lot of ways to do the same thing, so mm -hmm. you can really choose for yourself what you want. Yeah. To use true. right. Um, yeah, but it's so annoying that you have to um, that you that you that you have to go into the menus all the time. It's a bit yeah, it takes like, a lot of mouse travel in this program, which kind of annoys me because I like hotkeys and stuff. So we we were trying to show uh, Mache and I were showing Vitaly um, just how we use this program, and he was like, "Oh, there's no hotkeys." He's like, oh, "I can't use it." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a beast, man, the guys. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, what did I do there? I need to, uh, I this so, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of things to do. Right? I'm just... It's hard to do this and talk, too, so I, I understand. Maybe while you're building this, I'm going to go through some more questions. 
Is, yeah, yeah. Is it's your, just questions. Is your using SketchUp just for plan, uh, planning, or is he actually doing modeling and rendering from it as well? I think we already talked about that. So that question, that, that's mm -hmm. answered, I think, right? We already talked about that. Yeah, I mean, I use it for, for mainly, mainly for blockouts, but sometimes that's 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 enough. So. Yeah, and I we just you just kind of showed that process. Uh, another yeah. question. This is kind of like a request, I guess. Hi, I'm watching the LearnSquared stream, and I'm not sure if this is question is appropriate for this stream. I'm a student studying graphic design in LA. We're hosting a student senior show in December. A lot of us are fans of Ash and LearnSquared. We would love for you guys to come and see the show. Um, yeah, that'd be cool if we can somehow manage it. I have a pretty consumed, busy life. Um, I would love to, to, to be a part of your, your student show. Um, let me see what the best way of getting um, that information to you, though. I'm going to send you an email. Let's see. Mm, I think it's send an email out, if you could, to um, Mohammed at Learn Squared, M-O-H-A-M-E-D at LearnSquared.com and um, let him know your inquiry and then he'll get to, in touch with uh, Andrew, Maché and I and we'll try to see what's going on. Um, no promises, okay? Can't promise to that. Um, next question is, how are you finding uh, teaching? Your, um, do you do any teaching before going to the ID Academy? So that's a good question and you kind of answered it a little bit, but yeah. So how are you liking teaching? Uh, did you do it before going to the Academy? Well, I, I didn't really teach a class like uh, at the Idea Academy. I just have a class of, of um, let's see, like uh, twelve students that I, I, I teach like in real life. Um, I, I did do some gum roads <laughs> and I did some tutorials and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's that's completely different, of course. Um, no, I, I love teaching, man. Teaching is the best for sure. Awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, what else did they want to know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, teaching. I mean, you already kind of, we already kind of spoke about it. Uh, somebody asked a good question because I, I agree with this one. Um, how do you deal with the rage of having to press four buttons to move one thing in Fusion? <laughs> you just I know. deep breaths, deep breaths. The thing is, like, there, for as many um, difficulties that this program kind of brings, it, it also counters it. But I feel like sometimes it's 50-50. But uh, sometimes, I mean, if you find it tr troubling to do that, then you should probably give poly modeling a try and just see how frustrating that is. So, yeah. <laughs> There's no yeah, perfect I, solution. I think that's the key right now. So unfortunately, I try to avoid moving stuff as as much as possible anyway, and that's why I do my blockouts in in in, uh, in SketchUp. Hmm. Um, so so basically, all the all the components are roughly in this in, in the area they need to be because in SketchUp, moving is the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Um, and, and scaling uh, is one of the main things I so hate in, in Fusion. Yeah. Just. Because it doesn't work. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it kind of works, but it doesn't, and it doesn't like your anchor spot always is like all wonky. So you you can't scale to the center, or if you want to scale off something, it just kind of goes off into a weird tangent. You know, I found that. Yeah. But I mean, I could be doing it wrong. That's one thing I'm always cautious of with this program because I haven't spent like m like a, probably nearly as much time as you have or Mache or. Um, Kirill has yeah. in this program, so I don't know if I could necessarily judge it on on my little bit of experience. What's interesting here yeah, is you're I, watching your you're making one thing on one corner and then you're um, replicating it. Then, huh? Yeah, that, that's just I, it's, I'm lazy. <laughs> no, that's not lazy. That's working smart. Because if you were to do it constantly, that would just be kind of a shame. So. Yeah, you can you can even like pull it here and then just like update automatically. Oh, how did you do that? So you made the right, so, chamfer and then... Yeah, I just dragged it on the timeline uh, back in the rotation because it's uh, all the same body anyway. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Very nice. Um, <laughs> are you making I the like, interior of your pieces all models? Somebody asked that. Uh, you mean interiors of the drones? Yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes I don't. I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of time to plan out the whole interior. Yeah. Um, and so for the for the for this one, for instance, the the one I did for the company, uh, they gave me a really rough blockout. Uh, I think I can, like, nah, it's, it's not here entirely. I just deleted some parts. But um, basically, that yellow stuff here, that's that's part of the blockout they gave me, and it was a CAD model actually. Okay. Um, so so I could just import it here, and then uh, I just modeled on top of that. 
Cool. So um, yeah, that just gave me a rough, rough blackout. And, and like this, this big cylinder at the back, that was uh, that's a parachute container. So that needed to be in there. But apart from that, I didn't do any interior on this one. So Sick. I, I just li I just like modeling interior stuff. So that's why I do it. But it's it, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using change parameter system in Fusion 360? Another question. Change parameter system? Yeah. Change parameter. I've never heard of it. I think I'm going to learn something new as well. <laughs> Bam. There you go. Which I love, too. Um, yeah. Show us what it is. Who, let's see who was it asking it. Um, yeah. If you show us what that is, that'd be awesome. We'd love to know. We're always learning something new. Um, what's your workflow between Fusion and SketchUp? You kind of talked about that a little bit. You'll make something quickly in general form, if I'm not right, mistaken, and you'd export an OBJ from SketchUp and then bring it into Fusion that you use as a base, basically, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. So I, I just, I, I model, let's see if I can, I can quickly open that thing as well. Um, let's see. Um, let me just open a quick quick block out so you can see what I mean. Sure. This is I know this is difficult because I'm asking you questions and all this stuff's run on. And <laughs> you're doing a great job. Uh, that's fine. We're, we're all we're all judging you quietly from behind our screens. Yeah. So like this is the uh, the, the model in SketchUp that I um, uh, that I made for uh, for that drone I just showed you. So for yeah, for this one. Uh, right? Oh, okay. Cool. So, is this, there you go. This is the Imagine FX one that you're talking about? Is that it? No, this is the Gumroad one. Okay, that's the Gumroad um, one. The other one is the Imagine FX one. Yeah, this is the Imagine. They look really similar. The one that, I used to say, yeah. Okay, that's right, yeah. Okay. I, I used the same reference sheet, so. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I got a lot of really good feedback from my buddy Eden. Um, like what some of the things he mentioned was like Galuzzi, the interior. Is that his last name? Gretzio yeah. here. I forget how he spells his last name. Um, Mache had him on one of his streams. He's a Moy guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a Moy guy. Yeah. But uh, he was saying like how it, it looked too heavy and also the camera part just looked too heavy for a drone because your drone has quite little net lifting power. You know, um, this is really hard for, for, for a thing like that to fly. So I did more research and then I came up with the other design. On this one. Awesome. Um, yeah. That's cool. I dig it. Are you pretty active with getting feedback from friends and stuff across the internet? Is that kind of um, like a special part of the way you for your function and work? More and more, to be honest, because uh, I, um, <laughs> to be honest, I, I feel like I'm. Uh, I go to a lot of conferences, and every single conference, I learn so much. Now, one of the things they mention at conferences is like, I think. Um, Eflam Marche mentioned it at some point. Like, like the best artists are the ones that, you know, actively seek out feedback and and follow it. Yeah. And uh, from the right and people. after hearing that, yeah, yeah. So after hearing that, I, I really um, try to do that more and more. Um, and it it really helps, uh, I think. But it, it's really hard to to. You know, the thing about feedback is there's a lot of things that they will point out that you know you wanted to change anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then uh, it's just, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes. But I, I do try to get feedback on as many things as possible. So, yeah. It's difficult, though. You know, getting feedback, it depends on where it's coming from and how it's going. Sometimes if you're like, I, I have a real hard time giving feedback on people when they ask for feedback on, like, uh, something in regards to style, you know? Because style is like, it's basically me, you know? It's your taste and everything that you're influenced by, which is very difficult to teach, you know? It's mostly like you literally have to go through a life of experience, you know, to do that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Another good question is coming in. This is something I've covered in one of my streams prior to how I do it, but somebody wanted to know um, how you go about exporting your models from Fusion to bring it into like a quad-based, uh, poly-based um, software, such as... Um, Cinema or um, 3D Studio Max and all that stuff. What's your process for that? So you use Moi, right? Yeah, I use Moi, yeah, because that way I can control the polygons and stuff too. Yeah, so I, I recently started experimenting with, um, with with Octane as well. Okay. Um, so, but but I don't feel confident enough yet to to do professional renders. So I use Keyshot, and Keyshot imports CAD files. Oh. Great. Um, so I don't need to. <laughs> but the thing is, Keyshot also exports OBJs. 
So I can get my I can, I can use Keyshot as an as an exporter actually. Oh, um, that's great! I didn't even know that. <laughs> I've never used Keyshot. So what what's the reason for wanting to try out Octane? Um, well, I, I I'd like to um, do more uh, animation oriented oh, stuff. Cool. Yeah. And uh, uh, just as I as I <laughs> said a while ago on, on, on your on one of your Facebook posts, I think like I, I'd really like to do a short film at some point. Yeah, you should. Or at, le at least get some more moving moving imagery because you know a still image is, is nice to look at, but uh, you know if if you really want to tell a story, you need more than just a, a still image. Yeah. Um, and and that was my initial like thought with with doing Octane because it, I did some animation work in Keyshot and it, it takes ages like it takes me three days to get a ten second video oh, right yeah that's not even that's not even right <laughs> that's no. not even cool yeah yeah you should yeah, definitely I mean we did uh, Chris and I did Epoch in, in Octane and um, made nine and the, all my current stuff I'm building are they're all in Octane so. But I mean, there's also Arnold. Um, there's also um, Redshift as well. Have you tried Redshift or checked that out? Uh, no, I haven't tried it yet. But my buddy Stephen Corman, who is also in the chat here, he uh, he does amazing stuff with Redshift. So uh, might might give that a go as well. I also tried Blender Cycles, which is actually quite awesome. Yeah, I heard that's great too. Um, but um, there's so uh, many of them, right? It's so hard to keep up. Yeah. Because like, <laughs> oh, now you're done with learning understanding modeling. So now it's like rendering, and then it's like before you do that, then you need to learn UVing, you know, and then you need to learn texturing. Like right now, the work, the the works um, flow that I currently have, and I'm curious to see what you have or where you're going, and who and everybody that's listening to this too. So if you're gonna make like a CGI film or something, what I've found to be interesting pipeline is obviously having your idea first, and then sketching it all out and doing that whole process, ideation, storyboard, and everything. Because if you're gonna make a moving sequence, you need to know how everything is gonna kind of cut together, and there's a whole science behind that but in regards to the pipeline um, what I found I like modeling stuff inside of fusion if it's hard surface and then ZBrush for soft like soft body stuff and then for basic poly modeling I'll use cinema 4d then I take everything over to um, 3d coat and that's when I do the UV because it has a really great um, UV exporter for in there I don't know if you've known it um, it's actually a really good program and you can literally you can texture in there too they have um, really good um, PBR texturing in there and then if that doesn't do it for you then I've been looking into substance designer which has been really crazy another whole thing and that's texturing and then you take all that stuff and you bring it over to octane then you set it up and animate it and it's just huge it's just a really long process but that's kind of what it's been for me is taking all that stuff and then bringing it back into cinema and then animating it and then having everything together. Then you take all those animations and then different passes and you bring that into After Effects. Then you add all your post-production and then you use like um, Lumetri um, and Adobe Premiere for grading or you can use DaVinci Resolve, but yeah. So there you go, you got a lot to learn, man. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's that's crazy, man. I, and I know it. I, I don't know if you know this guy uh, called Sava Sivkovic. Um, Sounds familiar. Yeah. He he also does motion graphics, and and he does some amazing stuff. He did the trailer for um, uh, for for ICC, uh, which is just great. And and like just talking to him, I know that I have so much to learn. Like you should really check that guy out, by the way, if you don't know him yet. He's a. I think he did an interview with you actually uh, a little while back. A long time ago, uh, then, right? On my podcast? Uh, no, he, me he mentioned something. Uh, How do you spell his name? Uh, let me just. I just typed it into Facebook to be sure. <laughs> name check. I'm so bad with names, man. Yeah, me yeah, too. Just... Well, there's so many people, too. <laughs> and almost all my friends are like from the other part of the world. So like the like Mache. When I first met Mache, I'm like Majesh, Mustage. <laughs> you know, I always butchered his name. Yeah, so, yeah, different names. Uh, he did an interview with you uh, with CG Record, apparently Motion ah. Graphics Master. I don't ah, know. okay, okay, okay. So how do you spell his name? I just typed it in. The, oh, in is it in the chat? Okay, I'll get it later. No, because I can't. No, see in the chat. It. Oh, it's in, in the, the Twitch chat. chat. Ah, thank you so yeah. much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. That's really cool. But there is so much to learn. I mean, everybody that's in the is in the chat that you guys know just as well, you know, like how much there is to learn and 
how much there is to grow and, and how far we need to go. Oh yes, I remember I've seen his work too. Yeah, definitely. That was really crazy. That was a lot of work that he did for the IFCC, uh, the main titles. That was yeah. That was like a full on film with motion capture and everything. That was, man, I love it, man. I just love the fa the the age that we're in. Is it's so cool because there is so much to learn, but at the same time, like you could literally be anywhere now and create anything and share your ideas, not just as a still, but in motion and, and all that stuff too. So. I'd be really curious. I'd love to see what you end up doing, you know, eventually once you decide to do so. It'd be really cool. Yeah, it, it, I'm not making any, it might take a while because I need to learn so much more before I can actually start doing something that's useful. But I'm working with this, because um, I, I had this idea for a virtual reality experience for a while now, and I'm, I'm now working with a, um, a virtual reality company as a, as a sort of freelance gig. Cool. Um, but I was just chatting to them, like if they were open to to pitches from me as well. And um, so I'm gonna pitch my project to them in, in, in like a month or two. I'm just preparing a pitch a, a pitch package at the moment. Um, so that, that's really, <laughs> yeah, that would be really awesome as well. And, and, and just be, being able to direct that a bit. And um, yeah, I, I really want to create my own content, you know, cause uh, I really like, you know, the whole surface thing with uh just you know making stuff for others but I, I really want to make my own content as well um yeah i think virtual reality would be a really really cool uh, area to try that yeah it's a whole different realm when you select a um uh, an edge how do you get it to select the whole ring around it because that's one thing sometimes it doesn't automatically do that is there a certain thing that you're doing to allow you to do so yeah, absolutely. There's um, there's this thing here called tension chain. Ah, there it is. Okay. You have to select that one. Ah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hours of I frustration. Know, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sensei. Fusion Sensei. <laughs> I'm not a fusion sensei, man. You're, you're, you're Mr. Miyagi like, if I, Sensei. Yeah. <laughs> if I look at if I look at my chain, I'm like, holy crap, I wish I could do what he could do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's it's always it. like that. He's crazy. But he, he, I think Mache is really interesting the way he approaches things. That's why I love learning, love learning from him. And the, the, like the basis of Learn Squared is based on like him and I teaching one another. And I think what really started to come out is like, wow, like you think really differently. How do you problem solve? And it really comes down to when you get down to the nitty gritty of between two creatives, it's just the difference of the mindset and their approach. Because everything else, it's kind of like how you're saying how SketchUp has, um, just like you know a couple of key simple features but then it's like you can go off and go crazy with them i think it's the same way it's like we have simple approaches but it's how you approach it and when you approach it and the way that you approach it i think is really key um steven actually has a good question in the chat i want to ask for us to answer it um steven says ash and your uh how do you come up with i with ideas ash for your films for example and your for your designs um let's see stop that uh, see that I just missed up the question. Um, damn it! Yeah, I missed it. Um, That's a good any question. Any specific process I for coming up with your stories? Yeah. Well, you go first, man. <laughs> I wouldn't know that. <laughs> oh, okay. So, how did I come up with my ideas? Yeah. Oh man, it's I. You know, for me, I I consume so much content as much as I can, whether it's movies or books or audio books. I'm constantly like feeding my brain stuff. And so I'm constantly giving it as much resources as possible, whether I'm watching something or talking to somebody or having a conversation with you, for example, I'm just taking in all this information. And so for me, like these stories and ideas, they came from a big collage of just all these things and depending on the project. So like, like right now I'm working on my next big film and like for me, it, it kind of comes in a lucid dream almost like where I'm, I'm actually existing, but I'm leaving my body. It's really hard to explain. And I'm almost getting these like weird meditative states. I don't know how to, really frame it into using a language to explain it. It's just a, it's a weird experience that I go through when I'm actually creating something and I'm kind of, will see the vision in my mind. So like with Epoch, for example, I had like in my mind, cause I made it with Chris. So we both, it was both of us input, but for me in my mind, it was like seeing things differently and like kind of just the thought process behind, um, wanting to make a space film based on design and thinking about design in that way and, and comp compositing our comp composing shots in that way and stuff. So for me, the ideas, they all come about randomly and organically, but it's, it, it really is a very weird personalized process. You know, there's no rhyme or reason for the way that I do the things that I do, honestly. So it's mostly just very 
organic and weird. So, <laughs> but I think the the key yeah. the key to it is is a lot of consumption of inter- information, constant constant information consumption. Um, which, cause I, you know, there's, I, I'm a believer that nothing's really original and nothing's mm-hmm. authentically completely unique. It's like, there's all, uh, everything is a remix basically in my mind. And that's not to say that anything's, nothing's good. It just means that like, there's a great saying, it's not what you take from, it's where you take it to. And I think that's kind of where my head's at with it, you know? So it's like, you know, Stanley Kubrick made 2001, but before 2001, there was other things. And then astronauts were, you know, and, and concept artists and storytellers were making up, you know, their versions of space, you know. And then, you know, then we see like Chris Nolan, for example, a contemporary version of Interstellar on space and stuff like that. So I'm going on a tangent, but I think with ideas, they just kind of come and you just enjoy them. And, and it comes from like a lot of consumption for me personally, I'm consuming as much information as possible and, and enjoying that ride. So, but how do you, how about you? How do you deal with it when it comes to designing for things like this? Like you have a design intuition, obviously, as you're going through and making this, um, what are you thinking about as you're going through this? <coughs> is it organic and random or is there you have specific thoughts and stuff as you go through this? And yeah. Uh, well, Usually I, I start with reference and I don't have that at the moment, so I'm just making stuff up on the spot. Yeah, I but it's difficult. Yeah. I, I mean, when I uh, usually my designs are, are heavily driven by by science and by scientific principles, hmm. and there's like especially when it comes to spaceship design, there's not a lot of spaceship designs that actually adhere to physics, and you know, you know, basic things like construction theory and and, and weight and momentum and that sort of thing. Yeah. Like no spaceship in, 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 you know, big blockbuster cinema actually has that. Uh, the Martian came close, but even the Martian uh, wasn't realistic in the sense that they, like, it, look, it looked realistic, but it wasn't designed in a realistic, futuristic way at all. And I think that if you do adhere to those rules and you understand those rules, there's a lot of opportunities that nobody taps into. And, and that's what I, when it comes to spaceship design, that's how I approach it. Hmm. Um when I when I do environment design, I, I usually um, approach it from a narrative point of view, and I just see what I um, you know what yeah like I really tap into that that what you say like all, all my references I, I watch a lot of movies and play a lot of games and I, I just see like what sort of works with the with the narrative yeah um, but yeah this is something like I, I spoke uh, at a, at at ICC. Um, uh, in May about my design approaches as well and, and I really try to switch things up so sometimes I really approach something from a logical point of view sometimes I just focus on shapes so right now I'm, I'm trying to you know get some weird organic shapes to contrast the, the super hard boolean shapes that I had before and, and um, I, I really try to switch things up as, as much as possible and then um, constantly try new things basically. It's awesome. Sorry. Yeah. And yeah. Your, your approach makes you unique too. Yeah. And to touch on what you're talking yeah, about, I, the, the logical spaceship design, I think you, you touched on something quite interesting, which is a new phenomenon, which is the generative, generative math based design of ships and construction and stuff. That's, that's really where it is, you know, which is really quite interesting, you know, cause that's yeah, going to no, be really interesting where that goes because it's not based on like, um, uh, like what, like my analogy for what we're doing now with modeling, which is like kind of like wood carving, but then you don't take like a CNC machine and you throw math into it and then it makes whatever you want, you know, based on what it, based on the parameters of the machine, obviously. But, um, that's really going to be interesting. You know, the constructs, I heard, a, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I heard Jim Cameron and the avatar film. I heard that that was like, he was trying to be a sci- scientifically real about that. Is that not true? I, I didn't really. No, but yeah, I the, the the Avatar film spaceship is, is one of the most realistically designed spaceships ever, like in, in, in cinema, and that's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's one of the few people that actually understands, you know, momentum was really uh, well designed or thought of in that film. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in terms of, um, uh, you know, the weight of, of the... Because most spaceships, like if you look at Halo, for instance, Halo spaceships are just big, you know, solid heavy you know structures they're just boxes like with alien, shapes and like alien kind of yeah yeah sort of but but like you know just imagine like if you have a solid piece of metal like that you know how much energy you need to move that and and 
and you would never be able to unless you have some sort of magic, you know, energy black hole. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, definitely. And a lot of it's like based on design intuition and stuff. So like, um, do you remember that um, that one movie? The what's that movie called? It's uh, the one where it's like a haunted ship in space. Frick, why am I not remember? I just watched it recently. Um, uh, Event Horizon. Yes, Event Horizon. That that ship's designed like a dick. It looks like a dick. So we all know <laughs> that's really good because that's a dick. <laughs> and then oh, the guy's awesome. chair too. Like a, what's his name? Yeah. Oh man, uh, the guy that was Morpheus. Uh, yeah, Morpheus is. <laughs> it's so messed up because that's not his name, but uh, that's always I always think of him in as in in the Matrix as Morpheus. Um, uh, yeah, but, it must be so annoying though if if you did a role like that, you cannot get rid of it. I mean, it's yeah. same with like the the James Bond actors, right? Or or Harry Potter or something. Yeah, <laughs> you can't, man. Uh, yeah, because you're, you're typecast, unfortunately. He's done a really good job though, um, keeping his roles. He's been he's done a lot of different things. Okay, another question, Ash and Yort, on the subject of teaching. Do you guys have any resources of books to help your you instruct and teach students? I appreciate under a fine arts master or. I apprenticed under a fine arts master, and someday I want to be able to pass on my knowledge and legacy, but don't necessarily know how to efficiently convey my knowledge. That's a great question. Um, nice. Um, and that's great of you. That's really nice of you to want to pass on your knowledge. It's awesome. Um, do you have, I, I didn't, I don't have any books or anything like that, that I know of. I'm sure there are books on the form of educating and communicating to other humans, but I don't know of them. Do you? Uh, well, back in school, I, I learned a lot of uh, pedagogics and, you know, the basic sort of teaching and, you know, how to deal with, um, yeah, yeah, basically how to teach people. I mean, that's what I learned at, at you know, teaching how to people English uh, stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, most of that just really comes down to, um, to common sense, I think. Um, most of it makes, just makes a lot of sense, you know, just different approaches, just understand that everyone's different, you know don't try to f enforce one method on everyone because you know it's not going to work that sort of thing you know yeah um it's i don't know basically communicating at a, on a high level i think with teaching it's very complex and i think the best way to learn how to teach is to actually do it you only learn mm -hmm. through that by communicating it's almost like it's as complex as like making love or something it's like you can't i don't know if it's <laughs> necessarily like you can teach this and learn it i think there's certain techniques that you can learn but it's so complex. I think it's very difficult to be like, yeah, this is how you do it and make it easy. Um, there's a there's some funny chat going on about like you know AI design losing the the human touch. That's the point of the AI design. It's to remove us from the equation so that we get out of the way. <laughs> and, and that's scary yeah, for man. some people, but I think it's great. So we'll see. Because <laughs> I think it's interesting, you know. So um, let's see. And somebody mentioned, yeah, 2001 did have a badass space design, and back then. It was as scientifically accurate, I think, as they could with the knowledge and information that they did have. They at least could they, think of, like, you know, the gravitational system and all that stuff. Um, I think, dude, yeah. 2001, right, was designed before they went to the moon. Exactly. So they figured <laughs> out a lot of stuff. Fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just insane. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of it was, was coming from knowledge that was based on, like, you know, from afar. And I think they did a really great job. And it still hand, yeah. still stands up to this day, even as like an interesting narrative. It's very simple at the same core, but it's really interesting. Did you ever watch? Um, I think it was like 2010, the day we made contact. I think it's the second film. It was, I thought it was interesting. I got I think it got a bad rap, but it was interesting. It was the second film of that whole world, that whole um, concept. No. You never watch it? I, I, no, I didn't watch it. You should check it out. I think the most scientifically accurate ship ever, it, besides the Event Horizon penis ship, is the um, Star Trek ship. <laughs> like the, <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfectly designed, especially the J.J. Abrams one. A big piece of metal <laughs> just like honking through space and stuff too. Um, a lot of it's yeah. just icon. You know, it's just being iconic. And when you're in space, you just think about it like you're literally in an absence of things. So and there's no sound and all that stuff. So it's so funny. Um, the interpretation of space inside of films. And there's always a critic, like, you know, being scientific about it and stuff. So, um, next question. I wanted to make, uh, I don't know what that says. I'm, I don't know if I can read that right. Oh, damn. I can't get it. But uh, I, that's a bad question. I, don't, I can't do it. Sorry, guys. Um, 
Let's see, Ash, have you tried auto unwrapping in ZBrush itself, or is there anything specific that you like about unwrapping tools in, Z in 3D Coat? Yeah, the, the one problem with uh, ZBrush is ZBrush. It gets in the way all the time, so I'm like, <laughs> I, as much as I love that program, I hate it so much. <laughs> if I don't use it every day, I literally forget everything. It's, it's, it's not programmed for me, I don't know. Um, so I, 3D Coat is incredibly easy. It's literally like Photoshop on wheels, so, um, I found it to be really user friendly and, and quite easy. It has its hiccups obviously as every program does, but I think the only problem with 3D code is they just don't have a really powerful like user base that could show people like how badass it is. I know Jama uses it, but like there's not a lot of people just going like, look at this program. I think it's pretty, really capable. And, and um, like I, I uh, showed, I think I showed it to Raul Marks and now he uses it and he's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You guys will eventually see what he's been up to in that. but. Um, I think he used some of it in the sh in, in his last title that he did with the, with the I think it was American Gods. What he did with the, oh man, Elastic. So there's too much stuff for my head to remember. God. <laughs> Either that, so or you know I'm, I'm, this... I'm like completely going brain dead. So, yeah. Uh, but you know, you know so many people as well. It's just crazy. Yeah, there's it's hard to keep up with everybody. There's a little more stuff going on. So. Maybe, maybe it's no wonder you make all these super sick inspired art stuff because you, your head is just full of everything. Right? Yeah, <laughs> same to you, man. Same to you. So what are you making here? What is this, like some sort, sort of support mechanism or something that goes between it? I've got no idea whatsoever. No, I, I, I saw this, <laughs> you know, I saw this sculpture of like, you know, this rock with, with molten bronze in between. Uh -huh. And I, I was just thinking of that and I was like, hey, what if I try to... You know, I'm, I'm just messing around anyway. I'm on a stream with, like, Ash Thorpe, so whatever. I can do whatever I want, right? Yeah, dude, who cares, man? Break the rules. Get crazy. Put some rocks yeah. on there. You could make a big no, penis. No, but... Mache did a bit. He do, he do like, a sketch up, and he made a big um, extruded penis. I don't know if you were here on that one. Yeah, we oh, like wow. to we like to keep it raw on these uh, Learn Squared streams. <laughs> Very awesome. unprofessionally professional, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there, no, like, the, the... A... sorry, go ahead. That rock was so interesting because it was just a like he basically split a rock in two with like a some sort of chainsaw or well it was more sophisticated than that and then he just put like these these strings of molten bronze in between it was uh, just really interesting sculpting. So, I'll take your word for it. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, this yes, was cool uh, until you put this whatever this is on there man what are you doing i'm just joking <laughs> yeah. shit man no I, I feel so insecure right now <laughs> i'm totally messing with you no I, dude yeah. it's so hard to make things and talk and, and you know be interviewed it's it's like literally you're trying to do all the hard complicated things how are you doing that so when you right click on it you can change the material is it like a you click on the object and then right click and then change the appearance or right. something no, it's 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 uh, it's the one the one of the things that's actually hotkeyed. It's under A for appearance. Oh, hotkey in Fusion? No. <laughs> so you hit A, yeah, man. and then you can click on multiple things, and then drop a um, like a material on it. Can you drag and drop a material? I think I've done it. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. It's all it's all drag and drop. Yeah, it's quite easy. It's photo real too. Look at that render. Ooh. Dude, like I, I I taught this course at the Idea Academy on. Um, like on, on this program, right? And um, you can actually render almost like Keyshot in this program as well, which is quite interesting. Yeah, is that any good? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's almost as good as Keyshot. It just it, it isn't as flexible. Yeah. But uh, can you move the lights around and stuff? Uh, no, it works with HDRI, but that's fine. Oh, that's okay. You can move the HDRI around then, right? Mhm. Mm okay. All right. We got um like seven more minutes. You good? Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll just quickly finish this. I, I spend way too much time on the weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is going down. This is going to be forever lived on the internet, just letting you know. Oh, how, did you Fuck, do did I do? how did you do a construction plane? Did you do a construction plane, or are you just based off the side of that one thing? Uh, just, on, just on that thing. Okay, cool. I'm, awesome. I'm lazy like that. No, it's not lazy. And, and it's funny because uh, when Kirill was teaching me this stuff too, he was like, he would always say, because I'm lazy. I'm like, no, I don't think it's lazy. I think that's really quite smart of you because... It is such a pain in the butt to um, have to make this stuff constantly, you know, to constantly mm -hmm. make things over and over. Um, it's just the wrong way to do it, I think. If you were to generate and make something from real, like if you were to do a study, like um, Aaron Beck was getting into Fusion 360 and he was 
he loves cars like I do. And so he started to model like a car, like a, 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 a um, one of his wheels from his car. And he was like making it on real scale. If you were to be approached with something like that, like, hey, like a company says, we have this prop, let's say like a wheel, for example. How would you go yeah. about like, we want you to, you know, here's a, an, an idea or here's a picture, but we lost the file. How would you go about making that real to spec? Do you, have you done that yet? Or is that something you'd be like, I don't want to do that? Um, yeah, I've, I've done that before. Uh, I, I did a couple studies just of, of general things. Like I, I did this gun thing. Um, so What's up with you guys making guns, man? <sighs> Too much guns. Yeah, I, I, I did yeah. one gun. <laughs> one gun. That's I'm just, it. I'm just messing with you. Everybody seems to I'm, make guns in this program, though. It's, it's always cracks me up. There's so many guns made in this program. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. this. This is on your uh, heart station, moment. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that gun is, is pretty much just back. Um, like, I just, I, I wanted to, to have that, um, you know, have all the correct measurements because it was learning about, you know, gun mechanisms at the time as well. Um, so I, I did that at the same time. Yeah, here you go. Um, nice. Yeah, so that was just a spec. And I, I, I like you can see, like with this, I, I started another thing that I never finished. I might, I might do it at some point. <laughs> but uh, this, this was how I approached that, right? So you just it, take a photo of stuff. Yeah, this is this is this is really similar to how um, Kirill is teaching his class. Very similar. Yeah, so so that's that's how I would approach that, and that's really similar also to how I started learning uh, poly modeling because you just you know most most softwares they just start with a uh, um, uh, with something like that, something easy, right? Basic primitive or like a basic sketch shape that you then extrapolate upon. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that, that's that's how I would do that. Awesome. Yeah. But I, I actually did model uh, sort of like a car. Um, I did a spaceship for for Star Citizen. Okay. Uh, which I think I'm allowed to show because it was I showed it online already. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll open that as well. Um, yeah, I showed it in a movie. I'll also be able to post it on my um, on my R station. You're using, I did that using a PC completely. too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you using Mac? I use both. Like a boss. Yeah. I have two <laughs> PCs and then I have a, a Mac Pro. I'm going to get rid of this Mac Pro soon and get an iMac, I think, though. Yeah. I just still, right. I've been using a Mac for such a long time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Everybody makes fun Shit, of me, it seems. So. It's like, I feel so bad about that, that weird bronze shit right now. <laughs> I could have finished the drone. Come on. Why did I have to do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well. No, don't feel bad, dude. It's fine. Maybe you can save this, and when you come back, if you ever want to, and then we can just continue and kind of go off and do something. I was thinking it might be interesting for us, like you, me, and Mache, maybe we could do something where, um, I don't know if we'd ever have time for it, but we'd pass through, a, we, maybe we'd pass a file back and forth, you know, through each stream. And I'd play with it, and you do some talking, and then we go back and forth. So, well, that's I, I would, I would so be up for that. Yeah, man, for sure. That'd be fun. Yeah, that's crazy. So, did you build a lot of that? Because I started learning some of the stuff in the um, the soft body. I think is that what it's called? The soft body formation part of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. So, so this is mostly sub D, and then I um, with infusion, and then I I just um, cut out some shapes. Yeah. Um, and then and then this is just done using regular, uh, you know modeling right yeah cool. um but here here let me show you one of the marketing images i did for this Sick. so that's 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 this one ah very cool is this online um well it's on the star citizen website but um they have a um like you have to wait six months after release of the images before you can post them on your own portfolio sure and so this is right now. It's seven months. I just took a month extra just to be safe. Oh, so yeah, that's uh, nice of you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be posting this soon. Very cool. Yeah, yeah that's rad. But that was, a, that was, that was a lot of fun. But that still, there were, there's, there's so much stuff I, I still wanna, I still want to change. But it was, it was good fun to, to try this workflow as well. And 
I, I so love the clean cat models, man. It's, it's oh, so sexy. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's math. It's simple math. And, and it's like, I mean, that's not simple, but it's 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 easy to see and it's very clean. It takes anything that's unclean and like refines it. I love that back end. That's really nice. Do you So on your gum roads and stuff, for people that might be uh, curious about what you're doing and teaching, do you teach the um, the sub D? Not the sub D. Is it called the sub D? The, the soft body? Well, one? it's... It, it's form sculpting is it actually it's called sculpting and um, it. i don't have yeah i don't have f1 uh at this moment just on sculpting i mean i i use it for the propeller blades of my drones yeah right so this this is all sculpted in that same thing cool um but uh, i will i will definitely do one in the future um it, it's just that i i i you know at the time i didn't feel confident enough with it to to teach it if you, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like this body was done using that as well. Um, simple cutouts and uh, yeah, some simple shapes. Oops. Yeah, yeah but I'll, I'll definitely put that on the on on Gumroad soon. And I also plan to do some SketchUp Gumroads for people that are interested because SketchUp is such an easy, um, such an easy tool to use. Yeah. This bullshit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, leave it. I think it's cool. Then you can. Okay. <laughs> don't feel bad about <laughs> it, man. Leave your leave your gold blings, your blings. We'll call those uh, the drone blings. <laughs> awesome, out man. of everything I could have done on the on the on the stream of Ash, I, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> you did great, man. Dude, thank you so uh, much for coming on the show today. I appreciate it, and I'm sure everybody else did. So I'll give you a round of applause. Yeah, good job. <laughs> it's just coming from uh, me, but everybody give a give you a good uh, pat on the back and some props. <laughs> and he's got Gumroads. Yeah. Um, can you post your Gumroad link so that's just in case people um, are curious and they want to learn Fusion and learn it from you specifically? It'd be good because there's not a lot of resources out there for that. And so um, we were gonna have a class with Kirill. Kirill also has some content out there if you guys are interested as well. Um, we don't care. We just want you guys to get better, and, and, and education is, is is rampant everywhere. So, um, but yeah, that'd be awesome. It'd be cool for everybody to know and see and be a part of it. So there you go. I, I, I yeah, because I bought one of yours. I bought the the Rubik's cube one like a long time ago. Yeah, when I first started learning it. So it, it's super super easy getting started. Yeah, if I if I if I may, I, I just want to plug one thing. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, which is which is a playgrounds festival in in the Netherlands um, on the fifth and sixth of October. Okay. Um, so th that's a that's a yeah. What is that exactly? A pretty new. Oh, it's it's just a, like a, a speaking event. So we've got we're gonna have a bunch of speakers, including uh, the guys from uh, from Level Up are gonna be there. Cool. Um, Chris Chris Rosewarren is gonna be there. Uh, we've got that dude from Pixar, um, Anthony Kristoff, who is now art directing Incredibles two. He's gonna be there. Um, yeah, so many amazing people. So, uh, and, and and the best thing is, is that we can actually keep ticket prices at just seventy five euros. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, which is like eighty dollars. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Because in the Netherlands, it's quite easy to get funding for for these kind of things. So, um, it's it's mostly government funded actually. Cool. Um, yeah, so it's it's, it's going to be super awesome, and uh, I'm I'm part of the team there, and yeah, we're just yeah we're really excited about this. So. Do you make sure you post a link uh, um, for the the festival too in the chat for people so if they're curious they can find it. But um, yeah, do it, people. Go to that <laughs> event, get artified, get inspired, make some great things, um, learn something new. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this stream. Big thank you to Yort coming on. Um, if you ever want to come back, let me know. We'll do some more, and maybe we'll maybe we'll do something fun. I'll go on in Fusion, and I'll like make a bunch of mess, and then I'll ask you questions as we go through it or something. So. Yeah, dude, we should totally do like a Mac with you and me and Maché or something. If 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 you guys are up for that, that'd be fine, man. That, that would be so cool. Let's Cause, do it. Cause, yeah, we could just like all make components or sort of. I don't know, like it would be so awesome. I want to make just the <laughs> pinky finger, and then you guys make the whole the rest of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, damn, that pinky finger is so badass. <laughs> it's, a, it's like it's basically a wiener. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah. The, the most detailed, like five million polygon, like pinky finger. Yeah, so. I get down with it, like Vitaly. <laughs> Everything would be like chamfered and freaking bullioned out and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Nah. Nah. Thank you so awesome. much, man. Um, appreciate it, and everybody for being on the stream. It's a great one, and um, you guys have an amazing day. And you know the drill. 
I guess I could say it. Be powerful, be prolific. So I say at the end of the podcast, I'll say it here too. <laughs> and uh, you guys have Amen. an awesome day. And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next stream. Peace. Yo, ciao.